What's up, everybody? Coach Kendall Ray, a.k.a. A Walking Testimony, here day 452, Walk in America for Mental Health Awareness and Recovery, here to let you know that you matter. We do recover. God is good all the time. As a mental health advocate and a recovery coach, uh, while I'm walking, I'm going to start doing more videos, just talking a little bit about mental health and recovery and sharing a little more of my life so y'all can know who I am. Um, guys, with mental health and recovery, it's so important to be aware. Um, it's crazy. I meet so many people in recovery that, uh, that are scared to share their stories because they're ashamed of what people might think. But the thing is, is when we're in active addiction, guys, we do a lot of stuff that uh, we could care less about the shame that comes with it while we're in the active addiction. All that stuff that we should be embarrassed about, we tend not to be too embarrassed about while we're actively trying to get the next fix. When we clean up our lives, that's something to be proud about because we overcame something um, that's not that easy, but it is manageable and it is possible. Um, I'm here to talk about the first time that I ever got arrested and went to county jail. Um, I was 18 years old. Um, I was in the delayed entry program for the Marine Corps. Um, I lived with my recruiter for like eight months. Um, or I'm sorry, for a couple months, I was in the delayed entry program for eight months. I had to uh, um, PT with the Marines twice a week, all that stuff. That's when I started losing weight and everything, but I still had a problem with the drugs and I couldn't give up the addiction. I had actually got kicked out of my house, was living with my recruiter, and then I kept a ton of drugs in this house disrespectfully. He would be gone all day and I'd be using. Eventually my mom found out that I was doing there and then she was like, you're not gonna stay with your recruiter while you're doing this. Um, I watched her flush like just a couple grand worth of K2, the synthetic marijuana stuff down the toilet. So either way, leading up to that, um, the day before I got arrested for the first time, um, one of my best friends from high school, homegirl, she lived like a mile away. It was her 18th birthday party. A bunch of my friends were over there. We were just getting trashed, um, just just obliterated out of our minds. Um, before I went to that party, I had a duffel bag in my on the sidewalk at my parents' house that had a note saying that they didn't want me back at the house, um, that they didn't want to see me in the neighborhood because I just kept stealing from them, and I was just acting foolish and stupid a lot. Um, I had no care for myself or anybody around me. Um, and that's just what came with the addic addiction and depression that I was going through. Um, so, uh, I got kicked out, but I got so trashed at those people's house that, um, they had uh, ended up taking me back to my mom's house. My mom had never seen me drunk before she had seen me high. And then like, I fell over face first in front of her. Um, and then I woke up the next morning in my bed, trash can wrapped around my waist, uh, or, uh, wrapped around my hand or whatever. Um. So the very next day, they uh, they want to take me to rehab. I had ended up uh, like taking my sister's car or something, going to the store that morning, just acting foolish. And then they're basically like, check it out. You can't stay here. Um, the only re way we'll have you back here is if you go to rehab. I was like, okay, I'll go to rehab. Um, ended up, uh, I forgot. I, it was either my sister or my mom was at a store or something that one of the other ones brought me over to. Um, I think it was my sister taking me to meet up with my mom and, uh, I did. And my mom ended up taking me, um, back to the house. Cause I was like, yo, can I at least go get a shower before we go to rehab? She said, yeah, I went and I turned the shower water on and, um, went and grabbed some of my stuff and went out to the car and I grabbed her work laptop and, um, just started walking up to the pool in the neighborhood. My sister had ended up driving in the neighborhood at that time. I even dropped the laptop in the ditch trying to hide it, whatever. Told her I was walking over to my friend's house to go get clothes. She's like, me and mom will go get your clothes, walk back to the house. Why they went to go get my clothes, which my clothes were actually over at my buddy's house, but not all the stuff I was trying to get. I was just trying to get out of the house. I ended up dipping off um, to the pool. My mom had to get back to work and all of that. I had taken her work laptop. She gets back to work and realizes she don't have her laptop, calls me. The thing is, is I had pawned stuff before, but at that point I wasn't trying to go pawn it. I was just trying to get on Wi-Fi to let people know that me and my buddy were about to go to Georgia. Um, but the thing is, I lied about it. I had a big problem with lying and stealing actually um, at that time. So I didn't want to tell them. Eventually the cops ended up coming up to the pool. Um, getting the laptop this is i was i was smoking the k2 i was on cough medicine up there and i just started making a big scene um 
while I was in the back of the cop car. Like I beat my head against the railing. I tried to kick the door. I told them that I thought I was gonna die, even though I didn't actually feel like I was gonna die. They ended up bringing a fire truck over there to check my vitals. They took me to the hospital before they actually took me to county jail. Um, but while we were at the hospital, they had me handcuffed to the, the uh, well, on the way to the hospital, um, I really wanted water. I had cotton mouth and I told him that I thought I was gonna die if I didn't get water. And he was like, when we get to the hospital, you can get water. I don't have a shirt on. I have jeans that I literally cut into shorts. I have some ghetto NBA slides on. I'm just not looking, not looking very decent. Um, they walk me into the ER and they sit me down. Everybody's staring at me. And I was like, yo, can I get some water? And he was like, no. I was like, yo, that other officer said I get some water when I got here. There was a big scene. So I ended up standing up and then just falling over, acting like my legs couldn't work, even though they could work just fine. Um, the cop ended up getting, there was two cops. They picked me up by my shoulders, like on either side and just kind of lift me off the ground and bring me outside. There's cops standing in a circle. They're like, are you okay to stand? I was like, I don't know, maybe. They let go of me. I fell over in front of all the officers out there. They grabbed me by my belt loop, literally picked me up like a suitcase and walked me in. They get me in a bed, handcuffed me to the bed, and it was just a big issue. Um, I caused a major scene. I was just ignorant with no respect. Um, I didn't care. I was trying to get out of jail, things like that. Um, really gave them a problem, even though I was absolutely fine. I ended up going to jail to my first couple of days of confinement. I ended up doing 36 days in jail. Um, I had a felony for stealing the laptop. After a month, my mom tried to drop the charges. They wouldn't drop the charges. Um, the state attorney wouldn't, but uh, they dropped it to from a felony to a misdemeanor. Um, got me released on my own recognizance, and then it was two weeks later I stole my mom's court and credit card and got arrested in Duval County and did a month for buying uh, a doctor a Dr. Pepper out of Sonic with somebody's credit card um, the first time I was in jail like I really thought that uh, I was gonna get my life together I thought wow this is it but at the same time it was not it was 11 times in county jail and two times in prison later before I was actually ready to get right in my own life um, so, you know, I, uh, some of my crimes were against my family. Um, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it, but guys, um, whenever you get your life back on track, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in redemption and turning it around and taking a 180 degree turn. I'm a firm believer that we do recover, um, and restoration and relationships, um, me and my family, we're good now. We have a good relationship. I was able to just visit them recently for Christmas and New Year's. Um, I'm just so blessed to be where I'm at after just years of treating them like crap. Um, there's gonna be more stories, of course. That's just kind of the first time that I ever went to jail and, a, and just a quick rundown of it while we're out here on the side of the road trying to stay safe at the same time. Um, but guys, me being able to be open about stuff like this, I wanna encourage you, you know, don't, don't glorify it. Don't do anything to enable people to live a destructive lifestyle or anything. But uh, sometimes sharing your stories can encourage other people to share those stories. And you don't know what story that just the right person needs to hear for them to be inspired to change their life for the better. So um, that's what's going on. Coach Kendall Ray, a.k.a. Walking Testimony, Day 452, Walking America for Mental Health Awareness and Recovery. Don't forget that you matter. We do recover. God is good all the time. Guys, show some love. Please give my pages a follow. Um, and uh, check out this journey as we're out here across America to let everybody know that you matter and that we do recover and that uh, we should all lift each other up with love. God bless y'all.